going on with y'all fam we back with another message another video you know what to do man tap in tune in lock in smash the like button hit subscribe if you're new to the channel you do not know i am an artist i have music available on all platforms spotify apple music amazon youtube any of the streaming services that you guys like to use i'm available on i appreciate all the love and support soulswithpurpose.com if you want a hoodie merchandise all that good stuff. Links are down below. I thank each and every one of you guys for coming back to another message. Y'all tap in, tune in, turn me up, man. As you can see in the title, your singleness in Christ. This is for all my chosen ones out there who have dealt with the spirit of Jezebel, Leviathan, trying to come after your life, trying to come after God's purpose on your life. Let me tell you this. You are allowed to make the choice of remaining single in Christ to the day that you go and be with our Lord and Savior if you want it to be that way. Remaining consecrated in Christ and holy and pure as best as you can be. Focused on the Lord for the rest of your life. And remaining single is a choice that you can make that is not going to separate you from the Father. People hate when you make this choice. You've got to take notice. You've got to understand what it is. And I'm going to break this down. Everybody and their mom will come and tell you why it's the wrong thing to do to remain single. They'll use scripture even and say, it is not good for a man to be alone. These are spirits inhabiting these people. They want you to get yoked up, distracted, unfocused, and pulled away from the Most High God any way they can. And sometimes they will use the Bible. Look, man, remain single in Christ. Remain single in Christ, okay? A lot of us are guilty of this, and this is what God wanted me to speak about. Have you ever realized how excited we get as humans when we enter a new relationship? It's a natural feeling of excitement, joy, love, all these things. When we enter a new relationship with somebody, but God showed me how we don't have that same excitement, joy, love, all these things when we get into relationship with him. This is what a lot of people deal with. A lot of believers still have idolatry in their heart when it comes to relationships. God wants to remove every idol out of your life. Idols can be subtle things. You play video games more than you study the word of God. That's an idol. You think about someone more than you think about God. That's an idol. Right? You get more excited when someone comes around than you do to feel the presence of God. That's an idol. He wants to tear all of this stuff down. When you choose to remain consecrated, holy and single, you're going to notice the spirit of Jezebel, which is control, manipulation, come at you heavily, especially for my men. Right. You're going to deal with incubus and succubus for my ladies to drain you, to get you back into sin. If they know that you can't be yoked up to another person, if they understand that you are serious about keeping boundaries up, if that you are serious about remaining focused and not distracted. They will try to cause you to sin with yourself by, you know, doing foul acts with yourself behind scenes, watching websites. Not everybody's meant to be in a relationship, man. I learned this the hard way, especially if you're chosen, especially if you have a high calling on your life. If you feel led to do something huge in this life, right? You feel led to make an impact, to leave a legacy behind for Christ, his name. There is going to be an agenda on your life to get you yoked up to somebody who is not of the same spirit of you right who is not on the same page as you are with christ they are coming in to destroy your relationship with god there's usually a lust stronghold because of the agenda that's happened everyone is battling lust at an all-time high because of the agenda because of everything being pushed onto us lust is usually what causes people to make you feel like it's not okay for you to be single most women, when you're on retention, for my men out there, they're not trying to marry you, man. They're trying to take your power source from you. They're trying to literally drain you and distract you. They're on assignment sent by the enemy, whether they realize it or not. It's trying to destroy righteousness out of your life. You remaining consecrated in him, right? People truly authentically believe everybody's meant to be in a relationship at times. Narcissistic people cannot be alone. The narcissistic people don't know how to be alone because they can't sit with those thoughts. They don't want to reflect. They don't want to face tough things in life that we all have to face and, and address with God. The idolatry in our heart, the sin in our life. These are things that the narcissist will never do. So they'll convince you and they'll even use the scripture of, oh, it's not good for a man to be alone, especially when they see that you are super locked in and God is blessing your life, 
right? I used to feel like I needed a relationship too. Like I was meant to be a husband. I was meant to do this and meant to do that. But I really don't know anymore because of the state of the world and the conditions we're in spiritually. The Bible does speak about woe to those who marry and drink and have babies in the last days. And that's where we're at. We are in the days of Noah, whether people want to, you know, think we are or, or say, well, we've heard this for this long and everybody said it's the end of the world. We have never seen anything like we're seeing right now on every level. And I'm not going to even break it down, but just down to the schooling system, so many areas we've never seen this amount of evil, you know, come to light and be just pushed onto the masses and everyone's accepting it. There's nothing more in your life that matters than your relationship with God and keeping it clean. It's not about you finding a wife. It's not about, it's about your relationship with God, man. That's what matters the most. Agents will get sent in to you once you decide to remain single and focus on yourself and keep God first because they know, they know what it comes with. Not only does it come with eternal blessings, not only does it come with restoration, reconciliation, all sorts of things that God wants to put forth in your life due to you turning back to him, due to you, you know, finding him again. They want to destroy it because they know how much power you have. A man who can be alone is powerful. Even with a woman that can remain alone is powerful, consecrated in the Lord. You know, you may begin to see your parents, others around you, pressure you, making remarks towards you. You might start to see a lot of couples come into your life when you have decided in your secret place with God, God, I want to stay single. I want to be focused and fixated on you until I come up there and meet you, right? You start to notice this matrix put relationships all around you. You might start to see romantic movies pop up. I've seen it all, man. This is the enemy, right? You've got to take notice of what this is and why he's doing this. One of the greatest ways he deceives believers is through love because he knows our hearts. Just like God knows our hearts, we usually have big hearts and we love purely with no ill intentions, right? So he tries to get believers unequally yoked or yoked up to a weaker vessel that he knows he can still access, which usually is Eve, right? And shout out to my boy, Mark the Messenger. He did a video on this and I'm about to speak on it a little bit. He did a video and said, Eve never wanted you, right? So if we look back into the garden, Adam and Eve, it is in a woman's nature to want a bad boy. It is in a woman's nature to want an unrighteous man, a bad boy, somebody who is not righteous, somebody who is not living holy. And you can even hear these same women say, no, that's not true. I do want a man of God until they actually obtain a man of God. And then they mistreat that man of God. They call that man of God boring X, Y, Z. Just like in the garden, when he, when Eve was deceived by the snake, she was the weaker vessel. And Mark really did a video that opened my mind up about the seed of Cain, potentially Eve sleeping with the serpent in the garden to produce the seed of Cain. You see, this is what's going to happen to you as a male on retention. You're going to deal with a lot of weak vessels, right? Weak minded women who come off as boss chicks, who come off as all these things, but they are so easily accessed by the enemy, right? So you got to understand when you're on retention, when you start to consecrate and live a holy life, these women aren't going to want you like that. And if they do want you, it's only for one thing. It's to distract you, it's to get you on focus, or it's to drain you and take away that power that Christ has given you through his word, through the blood, through him setting you free. I want to say if you're a Christian, this is another thing. Stop the dating stuff, okay? You shouldn't be on a dating scene. You shouldn't be on a dating app. You shouldn't be in the bars. You shouldn't be anything. You shouldn't be doing anything this world is doing, especially when it comes to dating. You should not be doing the dating stuff because that stuff was built by the world. It's a waste of your time. It's a waste of your energy, a waste of money. It's a huge risk to your walk with Christ because you can become unequally yoked, right? If God has someone for you, man, you will not have to make tremendous amounts of effort like this world says you should, right? Especially for my men out there. You should not have to put that much effort in to receive this person. If they are of God, you will receive them naturally. It will happen. The dating world teaches you to work for someone's love, to work for someone's interest, shower them in compliments, fancy dates, time, money, energy, all these things, man. There's nothing wrong with enjoying yourself. There's nothing wrong with going out with a friend, whatever it is, but to actually date and jump around, right? Two different people, three different people trying to figure out who's your husband, all that, who's your wife. No, man, it's time out for that. That stuff was built by the world, for the world. It wasn't built for the chosen. It wasn't built for the ones who were set apart seeking out a holy life, a righteous life. And as a Christian, I recommend right now, if you're still getting caught up on dating apps, talking to Instagram models, all these things, stop it. Stop it, man. 
Because in due time, you got to understand if Christ has somebody, if it is God's will for your life to be married, it's going to come to you when you're not looking for it. It's going to come to you when God removes that idolatry out of your heart. A lot of women, a lot of Christian women in 2023 have idolatry in their heart. They get so excited and happy thinking about their husband. And they don't show that same excitement or emotion when they get in relationship with Christ. They see it as boring, lame, not fun, right? The adrenaline's not there. The dopamine fixes, the dopamine hits aren't there no more. And us as righteous men, as people who are trying to seek after the Lord to the best of our ability, who are not participating in the things of this world are gonna get seen by these women as boring. Like I said, the same women who claim they want a godly man obtain that godly man and then they realize that it's not what they want. There's something about a woman, it's, it's, it's rooted in her DNA. If she does not repent, especially if she does not have a relationship with Christ, it is rooted in her DNA to naturally gravitate towards unrighteousness, the enemy, Satan himself. After you experience some singleness and, and you, you begin to heal, especially if you came out of narcissistic abuse, you may realize you have things that are affecting so much of your life, man. We're called to not only lead our house, right? We're, we're called to lead the woman. And a lot of the times you're not going to be able to lead a woman in righteousness. A woman is looking for a thrill, man. In 2023, a woman's looking for a thrill. She's looking for a dopamine fix. She's looking for something spontaneous. She's looking for something that's going to get that flesh going. That's just what it is. So you got to accept it, man. And it's okay to remain single. Look at Paul. Paul didn't have nobody. He remained consecrated, focused, fixated on the Lord and his calling till the day he died. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, a lot of these foul-spirited people will come at you with Bible verses even and say, well, it's not good for a man to be alone. It's not. And the whole time, the only reason they're saying that is to get access into your life, to start to go to work, to start to allow the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy what God is building in your life, what God is doing through you, right? And all he's already done for you. So do not, the Americanized culture, man, it doesn't help anything when it comes to being a Christian in this world. I can tell you that, especially when it's the dating scene and, and, and all this stuff, man, we want a structure in Christ. This world doesn't even know what that looks like or they can't even comprehend what it truly means. You've got to find a woman who's willing to submit to you, who's willing to trust that you hear from the Lord and his direction is best and he know and she knows that you're going to hearken to his voice. A lot of women don't want to submit. They want complete dominance, control. They want to be showered in compliments, love and gifts and they get more excited about things that are of this flesh than they do with their relationship with Christ. There's idolatry in a lot of people's hearts, even in my own, right? At one point, I had idolatry in my heart. I would get so excited thinking about, oh man, God, I can't wait for my wife. And I, God could see my joy. He could feel it, right? He's with me always. And he asked me that one day. He said, why aren't you this excited when it comes to talking to me? Why don't you have this same joy when it comes to getting a relationship with me? And that really opened my eyes up, right? So we got to really understand as Christians, it's okay to decide to remain single. And when you do, for my fellas especially, go for ladies, ladies too, but when you decide to remain single, this means that there's no fornication, right? Because you're either single and consecrated if you're truly living for God or you're married, period. That's just what it is. So when you decide to remain single and consecrated, you have got to learn to keep boundaries up at all times. Because like I said, the kingdom of darkness, these women, uh, for my males, for my women out there, these men are going to get alerted that you are retaining your sexual uh, force, your purity. This is going to give you an even more potent connection to God. Okay, it just is. The more you live by the word, the more you're going to see God in your life and people are going to notice it. So when you decide to remain single, know that it's okay, even when this whole world will make you feel like it isn't. You've got to have discernment. You've got to have eyes to see. God does have somebody for you. You're not going to have to work for it, man. You're not going to go have to chase that person and shower them with all this stuff. No, because when you have a union in Christ, it's not even about you guys. Yes, you're going to be in love. Yes, you may have a family. It may be beautiful. You may reap benefits for it. But the only reason that that relationship is truly coming together, if it's of Christ, is for his name. It's for his glory. It's not even about you guys. Right. And people don't understand that, though. People do not understand that Jezebel, Incubus, Succubus, all these spirits want power, control, domination. They want you back into the ways of the world. So you do not reap the benefits of walking with the most high God. You can stay single if you choose to. Don't let nobody make you feel like you can't. Even your own mind and flesh will try to trick you. 
The enemy will try to make you feel like you need somebody. You need this. You know you don't. All you truly need is a relationship with Christ, and that's all there is to it. Like I said, there's nothing more important than keeping your relationship with Christ clean, holy, sanctified to the best of your ability every single day. Do not allow these people to twist the word. Do not allow the enemy to access your emotions, right? Do not allow the enemy to get to you and make you step outside of the will of God because you are desperate to be in a relationship or you feel like God, you know that God has this person for you, but you have to fight for this person. You have to do certain things that are not of God. That lets you know that no, hey, maybe God's doing this because you have some idolatry. Maybe God's keeping you single because he sees what's out there on the market right now, just to be honest, in 2023 and, the, and what we're experiencing, right? Look around when you drive out, go just look around. There's witchcraft shops everywhere. Lust is promoted left and right. You open your phone, there's more lust. It's just everywhere you look is the opposite of the way that God wants it to be. So a lot of us are going to remain single. And I know it's a tough pill to swallow, but it's also something we should be rejoicing over, man. I think a lot of us talk about singleness and we're like, woe is me. Oh man, I'm single. What am I going to do? We should be just as excited. Why? Because now we have a relationship with the creator. There's no better relationship than that. I don't care what that woman looks like or what that man looks like. There is no better relationship that you can have than your father in heaven who has nothing but love for you, right? Wants to prosper you, bless you, heal you, not trick on you and cheat on you and manipulate you. We should be rejoicing. And God highlighted that to me a while ago. And I've had to deal with things myself. You know, I make these videos not to just tell everybody what they're doing wrong, but these are things I've done wrong in my own life and I've had to learn from. God wants to remove every idol. And especially when it comes to this relationship stuff, man, you're going to see a lot of Christian women, even Christian men talk about this. They have idolatry in their heart. They're not even, they don't even care about their relationship with God like that. They're using God to get a relationship, right? They're not even rejoicing that they have a newfound relationship in Christ, that God wants to set them free and deliver them from all things to give them eternity with him. They're not rejoicing like that. I wasn't, right? And it checked me, right? And we all need that. We need that conviction. Ultimately, it's for our good. It's medicine for our soul. And our flesh might not like it, but it's the truth. If you want to choose to remain single, which, hey, for all my ladies out there, I am. Your boy, single, right? Single is a Pringle. Stop the email. Stop all that stuff. Not to be mean. If you want, you know, to talk to me as a friend or if you want to reach out in regards to anything, I may talk to you if God allows me to. But outside of that, man, I'm remaining single in Christ, consecrated. I've dealt with the Jezebel spirit my whole life. I've dealt with incubus my whole life. I see things for what it is. So don't come at me in the, in the comments, even twisting the scriptures and saying, no, it's not good for a man to be alone. That's the only scripture they ever use. They don't look at any other scriptures. Like I said, the one about being in the end times, woe to those who marry in those days right? There's so many other scriptures that we can go back and forth with. But you, in specific, whoever's watching this, if you decide to remain single and consecrated, just learn to keep your boundaries up because these people will cross your boundaries. They'll do anything they can to cross your boundaries, right? They'll do whatever it takes because the enemy has them on assignment and it's to ultimately assassinate that purity that you are developing with Christ. You're not going to do it perfect. You're never going to be sinless, blameless. But I can tell you one thing, you can get consecrated. You can you know, not fall to fornication and lust anymore with people who are not your God ordained, with people who are not your wife or your husband. And you can live this lifestyle until death. And it may seem impossible to people who are still plagued with the spirit of lust. When you start to speak to people who have demonic spirits still within their house, the spirit of lust, all these things, and you start to speak like this, it's going to challenge them to the point where they may manifest and they'll begin to project on you. Well, that's impossible. That's not that's not right. All these things. And it's because of the fact that they are literally being controlled by their strongholds. The enemy has them convinced that they need to be in a relationship, that this is this. And that. no, man, you need to remain focused on the Lord. There's nothing more potent than that. A lot of us can have idolatry in our hearts if we're not careful. Allow God to show you what kind of boundaries he wants you to set up. Allow him to increase you in your gifts so you don't get entangled with another demonic soul again. Right. So you don't get pulled away from your relationship with him again. Allow him to increase you. And we should be rejoicing, man. We came into covenant with the creator of this world. What? We should be happy. Just like we're happy on the phone when we're first talking to somebody new. Right. And we're like, huh, huh, this did it. And we're all giddy and we're feeling all these things. We should be feeling like this when we have a relationship with the one above. The one that sits on high and looks down low. The one that knows everything about our lives. We should be rejoicing, man. This is what he wants to see for each and every one of us. You know, and when you talk like this, the flesh, like I said, anytime you speak against this stuff, I have it too, right? My own flesh wants to go crazy on me. Anytime you talk like this, 
You know, eternity is what matters, man. This is temporary. If we have to sacrifice being lonely here and single for 80 years here to go be in eternity with our father and feel love that we've never felt before, then so be it. You know, cancel them Jezebels out your life. Cancel these manipulative spirits who only want to get yoked up to you for the blessings and the benefits that God has put forth in your life, the protection, the favor, the love, the grace. They want to come in and steal all of that, right? And take that out from under you subtly or get you yoked up to unclean spirits so you can become, you know, an enemy of God again. So you can start living after the ways of this flesh and not after the ways of the spirit. There's nothing like walking with God alone and embracing your singleness. You know, there's a lot of believers who are single and they're not embracing it. I wasn't for a long time. I was not embracing my singleness. I was always sad about it. I always felt like, oh man, I need that's the people pleaser in us, right? We got to get rid of that. We need to rejoice. There's nothing like spending time with God, man, and just being in his presence. Not saying you're not going to get lonely. Not saying it's not going to get tough. But would you rather go through that or get entangled with another person you were never supposed to be with in the first place due to them trying to make you feel like, your family, whoever pressuring you to make you feel like, oh, you need to be in a relationship. So let's jump the gun. It's not what God wants for his children, man. He wants us, you know, wholeheartedly in relationship with us, with him. He wants our whole hearts, man. He wants us to rejoice and get excited to talk to him just like we would get excited to talk to that person that we're looking forward to, you know, our relationship, our marriage, whatever it may be. We should still have, we should have these same emotions for, you know, when it comes to being in relationship with Christ. People don't want to hear this though, man. I know I didn't even want to hear it. Like I said, I come on here speaking a message from experience, from, you know, learning, not just, you know, coming on here, not pointing a finger and telling people what they got to do. No, this is from experience. I know when I still had idolatry in my heart, guess what? None of the stuff I have right now was in my life. None of it, right? Not the peace that I have, right? Not the uh, clarity, my discernment, the spiritual gifts I have, my knowledge of the word, all of this stuff was not in my life when I was wrapped up with somebody I wasn't supposed to be with. And this person was even professing the faith herself. The Bible says the devil comes at you as an angel of light. So you got to be wary, man. You got to be mindful. And it's okay to make that decision. You know, it may change when you get older. You never know. But if you want to make the decision to say, hey, Lord, I just want to stay single. I just want to stay with you. I don't want, I don't, don't stop doing the dating stuff. Get off the dating apps. You're doing things that are of this world thinking you're going to find a godly husband in a worldly place. That's not how it works, man. It's not how it works. If God truly has somebody set apart for you and it's for a purpose and you have a high calling on your life, God's not going to just give you anybody and everybody. You're not going to just find them, you know, in places such as bars and all these other places. It's time to get out of that. Get off of these dating apps, man. Remain consecrated and holy, man. As best as you can be with the Lord. That's what matters most. You got 80 years on this planet, if you're lucky and blessed, 100 at most, and then there's eternity. Really let that sink in and soak in every time that you feel like you want, you know, um, something that God has may have highlighted and told you, hey, this is not what I have for you. You know, for me, it was a hard pill to swallow, and I've accepted it, and I'm happy about it. Honestly, truly, I really am. I feel more blessed than I ever have, and I know when I get into this state, you know, I'm, I got that tunnel vision. I'm locked in on the Lord. That's when all the distractions start to come, the Jezebels. I start to see relationships everywhere, especially during the holiday season, right? You're going to see everybody in love. That's how the enemy works. It's all emotional manipulation. It's why God calls us to not follow after our own heart. It's wicked at best. We can be deceived due to our emotions. People always say, well, follow your heart. Follow. No, that's not what God says. God said to deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow him. So this may look like denying that thing that you feel like may is love that is love but really it's just lust really it's just you fantasizing really it's just you feeling pressure really it's just you having idolatry in your heart and i'm just here to be the messenger so don't shoot me i'm just the messenger right giving the message and relaying what the word of god says i love each and every one of you guys man if you made it to the end of the video make sure you smash the like button i'm gonna be uploading more consistently i am back you guys leave comments down below anything you guys are struggling with anything like that man i love to see what you guys want me to do topic videos about because I like to help. I like to do these videos to actually help, not just come on and uh, ramble like some other people may do. You know, I like to really make an impact and, and share forth what God has done for me. So leave comments down below. Say a prayer for your brothers. Say a prayer for your sisters. Say a prayer for yourself. And you already know what it is, man. Until next time, it's your boy, Justice.